In this video, we're going to be adding on to our brand new login method that we created in the last video. And what we're trying to do is return a token. Whenever the user logs in successfully, we'll give them back a token. The user will be able to use this token to get access to certain APIs throughout our application. And that's pretty much it for this video. What we'll do first thing to make this happen is go into our startup class and we'll tell our application that we want to add authentication to our application and also we want to tell our application that we're going to be using JWT tokens. And then also we'll go into the app settings.json file and add some settings in there. Let's go knock these two things out first and then we'll come back and uh, check these three out and knock these out later. Um, down in the description you'll find a bunch of links like usual and the one is about the add authentication method and that is this page here. So if you go down in the description, click on that link, you'll end up on this page. And here they show you different ways to set up your policies and as well as setting up multiple th different authentication schemas, things like that. And down here I found a uh, good piece of snippet that we could use to get us started. Here is the add authentication method. And here we're telling the application that we want to use JWT tokens. And this is perfect. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Let's copy this and then inside the configure services inside of our startup class, we'll paste this. Let's go and open up our startup class. So control P and then startup class. Now, like it says in the documentation within our configure services method right there, I'm just going to paste that snippet we got right below our uh, builder. That's where I'll put it. And then uh, we'll clean it up a little bit. And then we only need one of these methods, these add jot bearers. So I'm going to get rid of the second one down here. And then we're going to go and change these options around. I'm thinking of just pasting a snippet I already have made. Um, I'm going to paste that right in here just to save some time. And uh, let's go pull this in first though. We'll pull this in. And we'll pull this in from authentication jot bearer. And then this, let's go and paste in a snippet that I have. So paste. So uh, what we're doing here is we're setting up some parameters and we're going to be using a sign-in key. This sign-in key is going to be stored in our app setting .json file. We'll actually add that in a second. But this key is very important that you keep this key a secret. You, do, you never want it on the client side or anything. You want to have it in a safe, secure spot. And the reason is, is when the user passes their token to us, that we're going to use our secret key to validate that that token. So this is very important that this this app setting .json file um, key is kept secret. But uh, let's go first before we go setting up our app settings. We'll go and uh, pull these in, and this is from our identity model tokens, and that should take care of both of these. And then we'll need to set up our encoding here, and that is from system text. Okay, so now we told our application um, like what authentication we want to use, but now we need to tell our application we actually want to use it. And to do that, you go down here and you guessed it, you just add it here. So you say app use authentication. So app and then use authentication. There it is. And that's all you got to do. So we set up our startup class. And uh, now let's go and set up our app settings. So control P, then app settings, there it is. And then in here, we'll uh, add our settings or our secret key. So app settings. And then in here, we'll have our key. I'm going to actually call it key uh, instead of token. I have it. Uh, token in the startup class. We'll change that in a second. But I'm going to change it over to key. That actually makes more sense to me. So key. And this key has to be a certain length or you get an error back. And you want to uh, make sure uh, this key is secret. So I'm going to be changing this key before I launch the site. But for now, I'm just going to call it something like my super secret key. Certain length. So just to be safe, I'm, I'll paste it in here. But you definitely want a long encrypted string in here uh, uh, when you launch your site. Okay, so now that this is done, I'm just going to go and copy this. Go back into 
here and change this from token to key now. And uh, that should be good. So we set up our app settings file. We set up our startup class. Now we'll start working on our login method. I already created a login method in the last video. So now that we're just gonna tweak it just a little bit. So whenever the user successfully logs in, we're gonna return a token also with the result. And to do that, we're gonna call this method from within the login method. Uh, I already have this method created. We're just gonna paste it in. And the sole job of this method is to return token. So you pass in a user and it returns a JWT token every time. And uh, we'll, I'll show you uh, that in a second. I'll paste that in. Let's go first, just uh, tweak our login method. Let's open up our auth controller. So if you hit control P and then uh, open up the auth controller we created in the last video, then within the login method, we're just gonna change this around. So we're gonna also return the result as well. So let's return a object, so new, and we'll still re re return the result. So equals result. And then also we're gonna return a token equals, and for now I'm just gonna put a string in here, anything. Uh, we're gonna be calling our, our method in a second. Uh, I, I don't have it created, so I'll just leave it like that so we don't get an error. Let's go and get rid of these three uh, APIs. We're not using these. And then right here, I'm gonna paste our new token generator. So just paste it in here. I'll explain what all this does in a second. Let's go and take care of all these errors, like pulling all our claims, our, our security key. So we'll go and just set this all up. So pull this in from system security claims. And then pull this in from JWT token, or oh, identity model tokens, that's right. Encoding from system text. And uh, we'll actually have to pull in our I configuration in our constructor in a second. We'll finish off these errors though. And then here, um, it's not security key in our app settings. It's actually key. That's what we called it. So we'll just change this over to key. And then we need to pull in this uh, I configuration. Uh, that's what that's called. And if we go up in the constructor, it's called I configuration. Let's go and pull this in. And you want to pull that in from the Microsoft extensions configuration. And then we need to give it a name as well. And I'll call it config. And we'll initialize this, select this one. And then I'll just go and put a underscore, copy this and replace this. Okay. And then make sure that name uh, that you have here is the same down here and you shouldn't have that error anymore. Okay. So we just set up our token generator. And this is really uh, simple. Like we're gonna have to come in and change this a lot later on. We're gonna add roles, things like that. But for now, uh, we're passing in a user. Then from that user, we get the ID and we get the username. We are, we're gonna include that with this, with this token. Now, right here, you never wanna add in anything that's uh, sensitive information because it's not really a secret or anything and it could easily be uh, looked at. And I'll show you that in a second when we generate this token. There's actually a website you could just paste the token into and you can get all this information easily. So you don't want to have any uh, sensitive information in here. And then here is our secret key. We get our secret key. This is how we're going to validate the tokens that we receive. Uh, we're going to compare it to our, our secret key to make sure it's a valid token that came from us. So down here, it pulls everything together. Like we, we uh, here set up our claims up here. We, we include it right here. And then we add an expiration date one day to our token. Then we add in our credentials. And then here we create the token and then we return the token right here. Uh, really simple. Now that that is done, now we could go and call our new uh, token generator machine, I called it. So let's copy this, paste that in there. And then make, make sure you pass in that user, it needs the user. And that's it. That should return a token. And then get rid of the semicolon. 
Now let's go and test our login before we actually start using our Jot tokens. So let's go into Postman and uh, test this endpoint and see if we can get a token back without a problem. To do that, let's boot up our server. So navigate into the API. So change directory ci.api, then .NET run. And then let's go into Postman and test this API. Oh, make sure you save everything before we do that. That would help. Save this and this and this. So now that everything's saved, then let's boot this up. I'm gonna shut it down just to make sure. Okay, now I'll, I'll open up Postman. I'm gonna test our login method. So inside the auth controller and I'll open up the API. So this is going to be a post. This is the same settings as, as we did in the last video. It's going to be a post localhost 5000 API auth login. And then inside the body, I'm going to put in a valid username and a valid password, a raw. And then make sure you pass in that in as JSON, application JSON, this one right here. And that's it. We hit send. We should get back a token. Very good. So we're getting back that result like we were before and everything went through okay. And then here is our JOT token. So if we copy this, let's go and check this out. And they ha there's actually a site uh, you could check out your tokens. So if we copy this and we go, and I already have that open. And this link will be down in the description. You just click on that and you end up on this page. And then you could just paste your JOT token in here. And as you can see, we passed in our username um, inside of here, if I close this down, we went and we passed in our, our ID and our user, username right here. And that is showing up right here. And that's why you definitely don't ever want to put sensitive information in here because it's very easy to get that information out of that token by just using this website, for example. Uh, that's why you, uh, you don't want to put anything sensitive in there. Okay, now that this is done, now we can actually start using this JOT token to get access to certain APIs. And if we uh, open up our, our uh, notepad, here we're going to go and use the authorized attribute to protect a route. And we'll do that next. Protect one of our APIs using our JOT token now. So if we go into our values controller, and I was using this for testing before, let's just use this to protect one of the APIs. So we'll just pick this one to protect. So let's add the authorized attribute. Now what's gonna happen is now you're gonna need a token to use this uh, API. So authorize, and then we'll make sure we pull this in. And uh, from uh, ASP net core authorization, that's the one. Now we're gonna need a JOT token every time we call this API. Let's go and try it out, see if we're locked out of this API without passing in a token. So save it, and then we'll just reboot it. So control C, and then up. Let's go and open up Postman. And here within the values controller, I already have the endpoints saved, uh, the API, and it's this one. So localhost 5000 API values, that's that uh, API we're protecting now. Now we should not be able to get any values back. So if we hit send, and it says 401 unauthorized, that's exactly what we're looking for. So now let's go and pass in our token to see if we can get access to those values now. Now within the headers, we're gonna to need to pass in the token this way. So if we go back to our login method, I think we could uh, reuse this one. I think this will still be valid. So copy this, go back here, and we need to pass in our bearer token. So here you want to put in authorization. There it is right at the bottom. And then here uh, you need to be very careful. I fell for this once. You want to put in bearer. Then make sure you put in a space. I once did this and I didn't put in this space. I put my token right up against the bearer uh, word there. And I kept getting this error. It took me forever to figure it out. So make sure you put a space here. So I'll go back, put a space, and then paste in your JOT token. There you go. Now we should get all those values. So if we hit send, and we're getting an empty array, and the reason is that the database is empty, but that is uh, working. 
So we we set up our JWT token and now we're protecting routes with our JWT tokens and that's great. In this video we covered a lot of ground and there is a lot of code uh, like this this method here and all the, there's a lot of different changes in the startup class. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste all these snippets and you'll find them down in the description. So if you go down in the description look for a link called snippet click on that you'll end up on that page and you can just copy and paste everything right into your project so you don't have to type all this out uh, while you're trying to learn. Now in the next video we're going to be um, adding roles to our, our users and we'll take care of that in the next video. So I'll see you then.